What is up, all you sexy mofos out there? Guys, I got to tell you, I just got done watching season five of Cobra Kai on Netflix, and season five is hands down the best freaking episode on this show so far. It just keeps getting better. It's like when you think, okay, they've hit their, their high mark. I said it about season one. I was like, there's no way they can do do this again with season two. Knocked it out of park. Season three, knocked it out of park. Season four, knocked it out of park. And season five, I mean, they're just calling their shots. And at this point, they're kind of printing money. And it's so refreshing to have a show that we can watch where it seems like everyone that has watched it have all enjoyed it and you're not seeing negativity on social media calling it out for certain things and that is so good and so great and it just it gives me a warm feeling down here in this old heart of mine because I hold Karate Kid very near and dear so you go back to 1984 1984 was a big pop culture boom we were coming off of Star Wars and so that had wrapped up and we really didn't have anything else to follow on so you get into 1984 and you're looking at like Transformers and then GoBots which eh, it didn't last as long but then after that you had Last Starfighter and you had Ghostbusters and then you had Karate Kid and it just became part of who we were from my generation and it carried on from us and we passed it on to the future generations and it's so great to see all these characters being so loved and cherished but then creating new characters like Miguel and Robbie and Tori that extends the longevity of any property is creating characters that we can relate to and love. Now, what I love the most about season five, and I said I was trying not to spoil this, and um, unfortunately, I probably, if you've seen season four, you already know Chosen. Chosen, played by Yuji Okamoto, was the standout actor in season five. He was comic relief, he was muscle, he was serious when he had to be, and he just came off as so lovable. And this is a guy who in Karate Kid Part 2 was a basically just a bloodthirsty killer. Straight up was going to kill Daniel, and now he's, he's mellowed. But I think the, the most heartwarming part of the whole season with him, focusing on him was when he admitted that he has been in love with Kumiko ever since he was a little boy. But he never knew how to express that. And then I don't want to ruin it for you guys, but there's that. And it adds so much more humanness, if that's even a fucking word, to the character. Because you get to, you know... Oh, he gets to open up and you get to see more of who he is and not so much of what he was and that was so great and then of course Terry Silver come on the main antagonist for the entire season Terry Silver to me was always the villain of villains in the Karate Kid series he was rich, powerful had influence everything that you want in a villain but Karate Kid Part 3 always seemed to kind of fall short for me. And it didn't really get to flesh him out. Well, now you take Part 3 and you bring in, bring him back for se- Seasons 4 and 5 of Karate Kid or Cobra Kai. And now you're fleshing the character out. You're seeing his uh, motivations and what's going on with him and you really get to the point where you if you hated him before you're going to hate him even more how he just manipulates 
everyone and everything. From how, if you watch season four, he got John Kreese put in jail to remove him so he could take over Cobra Kai. He just, it seems like every time you feel like in this season when Daniel, Johnny, Chosen all try to checkmate him, he's always able to have a counter every time. And that's just such great writing, such great acting. It's just a perfect villain. Now, there is a another callback to Karate Kid Part 3 that makes an appearance. There's a few, actually, from Karate Kid Part 3 that reappear in this season. Not going to ruin it for you guys, but it just adds to the series and adds to that nostalgia factor. And I don't, and here's the thing. I don't like when you focus everything on nostalgia because I feel like that's cheap to get views, to get um, positive feedback on a show. Because when you're just going for nostalgia's sake on an established property, anything, you can just be lazy with the writing or development of said property. And uh, because you know people are just going to go see it. They don't do that here. They treat everything from the past with kid gloves. And they give you just enough nostalgia to bring in us old heads, bring us back, but also make you, the new viewers, want to see even more. Or know more about these characters from the past. So... My hat's off to them. This writing team is just magnificent. Just magnificent. Now, there's a few things I didn't like. One being the um, the whole thing with Miguel going down to Mexico. It felt like they... It felt like that was rushed through a little bit too quickly and we didn't get much of a payoff out of that it was like he just went down there for a day trip like a field trip and then came back home that just to me felt like maybe it didn't need to be in there because you could have you could have stretched that particular story arc out for at least four episodes i mean come on we could have got a little bit more i know you want to bring miguel and johnny and robbie and all them back to kind of get them back to the main core group to focus on silver but I felt like that was just a little rushed I didn't much care for that I felt like you could have left that out completely there seems to be kind of this repetitive thing going on where last season you had the whole Robbie Kenny dynamic and now in this season you've got Tori mentoring another character so it just makes it repetitive and kind of took me out of the uh, you know really the Tory story arc I think you could have focused more on Tory coping which they do with her coping with the fact that she won the tournament by way of cheating and finding out that the reps were bought um, but bringing in the third party for her to mentor they didn't have to do that I think you could have left that out as well and focus more on her inner turmoil and maybe had her you know at odds with silver kind of like Daniel was in part three kind of make Tori that in this another thing I didn't much care for was the kids from Miyagi-Do we've all grown to love these kids I mean from from Dimitri to Hawk to Anthony all these kids and you want to see where their story progressions are going but it felt like this season they were kind of put on the bench a little bit and it wasn't focused on them quite as much which I understand the the past seasons were focused more on them and 
them coming to terms with who they are and their place in the world. But I feel like, you know, they're teenagers. There's still growing left to do. And I felt like maybe you could have kept expanding on their story and, and, and not having them know like, hey, this is season five, guys. But uh, we need you all to go, you know, sit on the bench for this one. And maybe season six will bring you back in. And maybe that's just because I am a big fan of the Hawk character played by uh, Jacob Bertrand. Love that kid, man. He has such range. I mean, he can be a straight up dick and just this lovable guy, just like that. So I felt like there was a missed opportunity to really grow those characters along with Robbie and Miguel and Tori and, and Daniel and Johnny and go on and on and on. Through all its imperfections and all the things I didn't much care for, it still just uh, just awesome. I mean, I I binged this in an evening. This entire season I binged in one evening. I could not stop watching it. It is such an amazing show. I am going to be so sad when it finally ends. And I'm hoping that this is not the end of the Karate Kid universe. I hope that, you know, this will lead into spawning something else later down the line. But if I had to give a score for this season five of Cobra Kai, it's easily hands down a four and a half out of five Swayze's. This is probably the highest rated sh- season of any show I have ever watched. I just enjoyed all of this. If you guys are on the fence about watching it, please do yourself a favor and watch it. If you've not even began to watch Cobra Kai, you can go back, watch the, from season one, right on up till season five. I'm telling you, once you start, just like Pringle say, once you pop, you just can't stop. Same thing with this fucking show. It is that freaking good but guys i'm gonna get out of here i hope you enjoyed this video like i said go give cobra kai a watch you won't be disappointed i'm telling you watch it damn it you will like it but with that said this has been your old buddy john and we'll see you again next time on behind the fiends Ooh.